Hi, this week's parasha is Parashas Tzav. In this week's two-minute discussion, we are going to ask a question that people, generally speaking, ask themselves when they reach this parasha. We've just been through Vayikra. We've just been through Tzav. How can I today extract meaning or significance or a message from the coming week's parashas? Discussions of Karbonois, specifications of Karbonois. How do we today extract meaning or a message? This is not a storyline. This is not an exciting tale. It is specification of sacrifices. How do we extract meaning? Rabbi Shem Shunafal Hirsch explains that to do this, we have to understand why the Korbanites were brought. And through this understanding, we can segue onto a message of our lives today. By way of example, the Korban Shlomim was brought for a very specific reason. It was not brought to say thanks. It was not brought to ask for forgiveness. It was brought when a person felt he had everything. It was brought when a person felt he was at content with his life. He was at harmony with those around him, with what he had. Judaism says at this point, the carbon was brought. A carbon was brought to God to say, I have everything and I am complete. But part of that completeness is your closeness. Your closeness I also desire as part of my completeness. So what does this show us? This shows us that the Jewish philosophy is one of joy. We approach God in happiness, not in misery. A feeling of contentment and peace is one that is accepted, is one that is gloried. It is one that is looked at and acknowledged by Judaism as an ideal. We approach God in this manner, and this is acknowledged and appreciated by Judaism. Not grief and misery, and when all is going bad, you still turn to God. There are times for that, but the ideal is one of contentment and happiness, and to say to God that you too are part of my contentment and happiness. The root of the word shlomim is shalem, to be complete. So to recap, the carbon shlomim brought to express completeness, brought to express a harmony in life. But also, part of that harmony, part of that completeness, was God's closeness. It shows us a fundamental idea in Judaism, that we approach God in happiness and joy, in completeness, not in grief and misery and depression. Yes, Judaism has times where we are sad, and times when we are happy, but the point is, times where we are sad are there to be gotten over as a stepping stone to approach God in joy. Thank you very much for listening and have a wonderful Shabbos.